So if we are giving wise guidance to young actors coming out of theatre school and we're saying, look, okay, you will have a director. How do we suggest that they find a balance, a creative balance with their director? The first thing is to listen. The first thing I think is to really listen first. You know, you know I think apprenticeship for a long time is listening and not saying anything until you're developing your own taste and your own aesthetic. Rather than going, oh, it feels, this is what I'm, I'm clinging to. I remember Langham did that at one point. He said, you know, I want you to just come in. Um, I pray you tarry, Bassani or Portia. Just come in and see each other as if for the first time, even though he's been there for a few times. And I went, that's not how I saw it. I th I th and I thought, and I thought, which was the right thing. I thought, oh, I thought we were coming in. And I'm going, after dinner, I hope you stay. But we came in, we saw each other, we circled each other, and then he went off, was about to open the casket, and I went, wait a minute. And it was electric, because it was like we had just, we'd done in a dumb show, seeing each other for, for the first time, falling in love, and then go, don't choose, because I want to have some more time with you. And it was a great discovery, because I went, yeah, listen, try it, do it. I mean, Miles was one of the first directors, he said, trust your instincts, too. Trust your instincts, but listen, you know. What is, what is the director trying to get? Or is it the picture? And I'm, I can respond to, you know, louder, faster, funny, I want you over there because of this. If that's the reason, let me know, because I can fill it. I'll find a way to fill that. It's like choreography. You know, Langham was doing figure eights from Tyrone Guthrie's uh, Merchant of Venice, where the last scene is all figure eights with, and I said, this has nothing to do with me. But it's like Swan Lake, there's choreography. You can fill it. You can find a way to fill it. And it was very exciting once I did. Because you also had with blocking, now this is a craft that is sadly being lost, I find. Uh, when you put actors spatially in positions, you have something to change, rather than meandering around for three weeks. Because some actors are self-blockers, and some are not. And you need to be protected from them. <laughs> 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 you know? Um, uh, you know? And somebody has to say, you know, this is not working. Um, so I love directors who block, who actually put you into spatial relationships, who understand the physical. I will going put on. a caveat that you say you love directors who block, but what you didn't say, p directors who block, and you're implying, I think, with spatial wisdom with yes. storytelling ability in the way the yes. blocking happens. Yes. That's the kind of blocking yes. that you like. Yes. It's the well, you know, even if it's like if it's bad blocking, you'll find that out. But then you have something to to change. You have yeah. a you have a, a blueprint to work from. If you were going to talk to a young actor about learn blocking, get your instincts about blocking, what would you well, encourage them to do? Look at great paintings. Look at things that are, you know, what's happening. You know, it's very interesting now because, you know, seeing musicals do that where everything is mic'd and now performances that are mic'd, you get now people who are, let's say this is the proscenium and there's a person in this far left corner and I'm singing to you or talking to you and I'm doing this because you can hear me. but. I'm not sharing anything. I can't right. see anything for that whole audience. Slightly arrogant. <laughs> it's fine for its, I mean, I've spoken with my back to the audience a lot, but, and I have to make sure they're there, but a whole song or the center, you know, especially if you're working in thrust, this center fixation. Go, oh, there's people over here. 